Oh shit. Oh shit. You know, I I was looking yesterday. Hey, Don, I, I wanted to talk to you too, man. You and I both, we gotta stay off that fucking weed shit, dude. Yeah, I, I'm done. It's a, a fucking drinking no, gallons of orange juice. No, I'm not. I'm not. I just fucking love it too much. <laughs> Smoke weed every day. I was gonna say breaking yeah, news. With, with everything that, yeah. that's going on, you know, like this is, I think for all of us, this is our temple. Welcome everyone to that ass after school yeah, special. Yeah. I am Aaron, and <laughs> and then we have staff man and Double D. Yo yo. Today on this particular episode of Ass, we're going to do Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yes. We wanted to do Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles because we kept talking about it, but we were trying to stay away from it because... It's a two-parter show within itself. Oh, hell yeah. Two-parter show. So today, we're going to talk about the boys, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Green Machine, and talk about how they started. We'll break down the comic, and then we'll go from there. So let's get this turtle party started. (laughs) Well, I was going to ask, what turtle did you think you were? Oh, Donatello. Donatello. Which is weird. I was always Donatello. Uh, yeah, I was I Michelangelo. Hello, man. So, <laughs> some no fucking shit. party dude. Oh, yeah. Party dude. Party dude. Party dude. And you know what's funny? I never worked with machines, but I always liked that bow staff because it's such an easy weapon it is. to make. Yeah, nunchucks yeah, are you know, and it's so. very practical. Nunchucks are hard. I tend to yeah, hit yeah. myself in the balls yeah. constantly with them. <laughs> so let's get into the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which was created by Kevin. Brooks Eastman and Pete Laird. So Eastman, who was born May 30th, 1962, started the Turtles with Pete Laird. Co-creator who is like him. literally a cartoon. And, uh, like he is what I thought a nerd would be in like the 80s. <laughs> yeah. See, I haven't seen yeah. pictures of these guys, so they look exactly. Well, you how hear him talk. There's them. like a, a couple documentaries out there of him, and it's that's uh. Who oh, we're talking about right Eastman, now. Eastman is yeah. He's like he flashy like cool and everything, dude, but Laird. Eastman would be the Stan Lee. Why Laird would be Jack the, Kirby. Uh, yeah. Jack Kirby. Hmm. They complemented yeah. each other yeah. really well. They they do. They do. So which is funny because they were fans or he was a fan of Jack yep. Kirby who did Marvel comics. And, you know, not to get too far off, they do homages to Jack Kirby in Turtle cartoons mm-hmm. later on. They're homages to uh, Jack Kirby, his actual, his real name. Jack Kirby was his pen name. So Eastman was born in Maine, Portland. He attended Westbrook High School in Westbrook, Maine with comic book illustrator Steve Levine. You might know Steve Levine with the Turtles as well. He was an illustrator and he was known for the lettering and coloring for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Kevin was raised and grew up a comic book fan with Jack Kirby as his idol and Kamandi as his favorite comic. Kamandi is a comic that was distributed by DC, created by Jack Kirby. Kamandi, The Last Boy on Earth, which ran from 1972 to 1978. You surely have seen that illustration somewhere before. So I, I do remember that. It looks that. like Tarzan on a surfboard. That looks pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've never that's, actually that's the first yeah, time I've ever heard yeah, it. Yeah, I never heard that in my life. I yeah, come on yeah, I've heard of Kamandi. I haven't read it, I just heard of it. So they were influenced uh, by I, these guys, but they're real quick, they're ri- so the, the original turtles, like how it was made, it was like black and white, right? Yeah. It wasn't even in color. Yes, yes. Well, I'm just that's just giving you background mm-hmm. that he ha- his his illustrator also went to high school with him, so they must have maintained oh. that friendship. So speeding up in 1984, Eastman and Laird self-published the first black and white issue of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The 40-page oversized comic had an initial print run of 3,275 copies and was largely funded by a U.S. $1,000 loan from Eastman's uncle (laughs) Quentin. It was published by the duo's Mirage Studios, a name chosen because of Eastman says there wasn't an actual studio, only a kitchen table, (laughs) couches, and lab boards. By September 1985, their first issue had received three additional printings. So, breaking off into Pete Laird. So, Pete Laird is, he was born January 27, 1954, and this is Mr. Laird. 
No, he seems like a nice yeah. guy. Virgin yeah, his whole yeah. life. That's like he. You know who he looks like. He's related to our boy Virgin Dave Thomas. Life, dude. <laughs> he looks like he's related to Dave Thomas, man. Yeah, so, I think Dave Thomas yeah. is going to be uh, one of our uh, mascots here. Rest, rest in power. Yeah, yeah he's like our yeah. callback. <laughs> yeah, rest in power. So Laird born on January 27 in 1954 in North Adams, Massachusetts. Towards the end of 1983, Laird was earning just $10 in illustration from a local newspaper in Dover, New Hampshire. He was also doing illustration for fanzines like the Oracle. I don't know what that is. I think it was an underground, so, let's see. what, the Oracle? I think it was just an underground comic book or something, wasn't it? Okay. Yeah, he said it's, it's a fanzine. Like, you know how in Detroit, have you ever seen those oh, yeah. underground yeah, comics oh, yeah. in Detroit? Yo, man, I used to get those, and I was like, this shit's so far off the raw, man. Like, it, it <laughs> the illustrations looked like they were done. They were almost in the style of who did we talk about that did the cat? Freddy the cat. Oh, oh, um, or, no. uh, Fritz the cat. Fritz, yeah. Fritz the cat. Uh, what is it? Baski. Yeah. Um, yep. Baski. Yeah, Baski. That those what those comics looked like the underground ones in Detroit back when Fuck, I was. Fuck, dude, you can't uh, find a comic book store around here anymore. No, no, no. But they used to issue yeah. those like if you went to a concert or something, somebody would be out oh, there yeah. handing them out. There was the. I like that illustration. That gritty, like the fat. Freak, fat, hairy, freak brothers, fucking comics. Big fat cat titties. Yeah, man, that shit's live. What? <laughs> and you, yeah. said you can't find comics anymore. Like, are they all digital uh, now? Or? No, no, that's not. Or you just can't, nobody's can't find the yeah. brick and mortar. Which is brick what I love. Man. Oh, those well, We can comics. all, just okay. to Up the sh- go one way real quick, just comic book shops in general w- was a place or a memory in my head that was so important to me as a kid. You know, yeah, fucking yeah. Judge Dredd. Tank Girl, yes, and that's actually yeah. Tank Girl was yeah. good, dude. And yeah, well, I, I was gonna Tank say, Girl. like, you guys had the introduction with the movie. I actually had the introduction with a comic book. My brother, who go. is yeah. four years older than me, had the comic book before the movie came out, and then the cartoon yeah. I think was starting to air and whatnot. And we'll get into that later. But the comic book yeah. was the first thing that I saw, and it just blew my fucking yeah. mind. And I'm like, wow, this is. I didn't even realize kind of where they were going with it, or what they were kind of making fun of or emulating in a sense. Mm-hmm. And it was just way ahead of its fucking time. So, Absolutely. so you got into comic books? Oh my god! As soon I as I walked out of my mom's book. vagina, I was. I had a comic book in my hand. Yeah, yeah it was <laughs> first comic book. You, you walked out there. Yeah. Yeah. The first comic Fucking book, Superman <laughs> issue thirty nine or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, See, little a little fact about Tank Girl. The artist or illustrator for that also created the characters yep. for the gorillas. Yep. yep. So he did that too. So anyway, we talked about Laird and Eastman and Mirage Studios was pretty much their kitchen. So I think that's pretty clever <laughs> that they came up with that name. Yeah, that, that is. Uh, they they said the first issue received a number of subsequent printings. Over the next few years, as the turtle phenom began to take off, Laird's newspaper experience led to the duo creating a four-page press kit that, according to Flaming Carrot creator, which is kind of the Mystery Men Flaming <laughs> Carrot creator Bob Burton's own Mystery Men press kit, included a story outline and artwork that they sent to 180 TV and radio stations, as well as both the Associated Press and United Press International. This led to widespread press coverage of both the TMNT property and Mirage Studios itself, creating a demand for the interestingly titled comic that caught everyone by surprise. With the solicitation of their second issue, Eastman and Lair's Turtles comics began a meteoric rise to success, bringing in advance orders of 15,000 copies. This Eastman has been quoted as saying, basically ended up with us clearing a profit of $2,000 a piece, which allowed us to write and draw stories full time. It was enough to pay the rent, pay the bills, and buy enough macaroni and cheese and pencils to live on. Pussy come <laughs> running. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, that would be their So, time. So the turtle phenomenon saw the duo invited to their first comic convention at the 10th annual Atlanta Fantasy Fair in 1984, and where they mingled with the likes of Larry Nevin, Forrest J. Ackerman, and Fred Hembe- Hembeck, which I'm assuming are comic creators, with... Then their November 1985 fifth issue, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles downsized to a more common American comic 
format and size and the previous four issues were also reprinted in the size and format with new color covers they also also in 1985 Solson publications released how to draw Eastman and Laird's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Solson will follow this up with six issue Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles authorized martial arts training manuals as well as one issue of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles teach karate volume <laughs> in 1987 it was an unexpected success for both Eastman and Laird and dude to you know just i don't want to go too far off but these guys created a world you know what i'm saying like they not only created a world they inspired children oh yeah you know like i've heard fuck stick adults right now there's like well you know you need to put away comics dude comics yeah. are life you know what i'm saying so you know for people it's for me the turtles because i know there's there's x-men you know you got the justice league so on and so forth the turtles for me have been just the best thing that ever they are they are outsiders in a sense yeah Yeah, they are man because they're not they're not (laughs) yeah i mean they're not they're not people in a sense of like the mutants some mutants can get away with Mm -hmm. going undercover these dudes got to put on a fucking trench coat. Dude, that was the best fucking, fucking costume, and I, I was always like, yeah, yeah, even, yeah, yeah. Well, like we'll get into the movie, but like <laughs> in the cart or the the comic, you know, it's Raph yeah. with his uh, trench coat and top hat and yeah. everything, fedora. You can't be caught wearing that yep, shit yep, without yep. getting your ass kicked. Nowadays, wearing a goddamn fedora. Right. Right. Hell yeah! <laughs> and they're and the best combination. If you want to talk about turtle combos, the best turtle combos was Raph and Casey oh, yeah. Jones because they have their own adventures. They have their own adventures in the comic and they were they complimented each other well not casey from the 80s tv series because that one was more of a dirty hairy parody but the one from the comic and april o'neill in the they comic both wasn't different, john well in the comic he's a he's more of a true vigilante where you know he has more he takes his mask off you know he he's more humanized in the comic versus in the 87 cartoon he's more of a dirty hairy he you can the actor who is playing casey jones he never takes his mask off he he goes undercover in his mask which was <laughs> oh, he's like, hey, that was hey really there's cool. book playing guys <laughs> yeah, like yeah. hey there's a guy over there with a hockey mask. But like, what is he doing? Yeah. He's just acting inconspicuous yeah. with a newspaper. He went to fill out a job application Jesus with his Christ. mask on. I was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, like, the 87 series was so off the wall with the characters. But ultimately what I was going to say is you don't know who a creator is going to be until they find the right medium. And these yep. guys found the right mm-hmm. medium. And it was you know, a joke, to, right? It was supposed to be. Yeah, it started as a joke. Like, you know, all right, we'll talk about these guys later. But I've always been inspired by this guy too, Jim Henson. When Jim Henson was younger, you know, his his mom was getting ready to throw out a green jacket. Like, she was just like, this is garbage. And he's like, can I have it? And she's like, no, this is trash. You don't want this. And he's like, can I just have it? You know? And she, she, he takes it and he starts cutting it. He makes a body out of it. He puts some ping pong balls on it. And next thing you know, the very first Kermit the fucking frog is invented just from garbage. You know what I'm saying? Like creators, I'm, I'm always fascinated with that process. So it's pretty cool that these guys saw something as a joke, but later on they're like, wow, you know, this yeah. shit is going to be impactful. Dude, I had Ninja Turtle birthday parties. Yep. Me too. I had, dude, I had Ninja Turtle birthday sheet cake. Shit, dude, my mom fucking... made a costume, cardboard costume, and I wanted yes. to be a different Ninja Turtle yeah. every year, so all she had to do yeah. was change the emblem from, like, an R to an M, and it was always pieces of cardboard, <laughs> and I just went over yeah. my body and wrapped around it, and it was, like, it was perfect. I think I oh, still dude. have those pictures. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> Great yeah. kindergarten, yes. <laughs> yeah, my, my, the guy who came and did my Ninja Turtle party, it was Raphael, and I, he came... It was like a dude in a costume. Like this was like way back when, first grade. He he was in the costume. It was a black guy that's just like oh, I'm just trying to make it. Like, where's the job? And he had on this spark. Yeah, he had on this sparkly turtle outfit, and the hair was so misshapen, but it just made my. You day. can always tell and, who made their costume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> and who yeah. really bought and, like a really good and one? And I remember me and my cousin were looking under his shell to see if he was real. 
and it was great dude he did like magic tricks and everything <laughs> and i was like how'd you get here he's like I, I drove in my pizza van i was like oh come on man like what are you this, talking about I I was the turtle van 1987 right i'm like where's the other three yet man you know like it was I remember that I we I actually still have that on VHS. Oh, that's my awesome! Party when he came. Oh wow! Yeah. So all right, to get back on it, Laird stated on several occasions that starting the Turtles was a goof. It was, and this is a quote: "It was not anything we envisioned directing our lives in any way, shape, or form. It was like, hey, this looks like fun. Let's self-publish it." Let's see what happens. Suddenly, just completely out of the blue, the Turtles phenomenon emerged and really from day one just took over. It was a rapidly accelerating process which culminated in essentially taking over our lives completely. This led to increased pressure on the two creators and the team which they formed to help them, including a prolonged period, about a year, of artist block in Laird. The incredible growth and complexity of the business that sprung up around their instantly successful turtle property led Laird suddenly led to Laird suddenly discovering to my horror that I no longer enjoy drawing yeah. that's fucked up <laughs> I it was really a shock because if I ever had anything that I could rely on I love drawing Laird and Eastman's creation went on to become a popular cu cultural phenomenon forcing both of them to take regular sabbaticals from the comic to deal with the day to day pressure of running uh, what had become a multimedia franchise. Eastman sold his share of the franchise with the exception of the small continuing income participation to Laird and the Mirage Group on June 1st, 2000. On March 1st, 2008, La Laird and Mirage bought out Eastman's remaining rights and interests and the two went their separate ways. Concerning Eastman's departure, Laird stated he believed that Eastman was just tired of it. On October 19, 2009, Laird sold the franchise to Viacom parent company to Viacom parent company of Nickelodeon but still retains the rights to create and publish up to 18 black and white comics based on the franchise per year. I would say out of all of that that was probably the only fuck up I wouldn't have did so did the Nickelodeon cuz Nickelodeon man they that last incarnation was so fucking yeah. bad it just made me want to vomit dude I was so he's like, allowed this. to continue to draw in the series yes. and that's canon but the stuff on nickelodeon isn't canon well there's st i've seen some of the comics that they have now and it's not canon like spoiler alert in one of the comics donnie gets killed yeah. like yep. straight oh. up like bebop and rocksteady smash his shell in yep. with a sledgehammer like they fucking work Damn. so yeah what? so <laughs> why they gotta kill my I, boy so and well, yeah, I, no, actually, man. I'm not going to bring this up yet. I'll, I'll talk about it because I'm not exactly sure this new series that's coming out. And this was probably one of the reasons why it's yeah. great timing that we're doing this now. But Last Ronin, that whole thing that's coming out. You guys know about that? No. No. Oh, really? Go ahead. Last oh, Ronin. Oh, I no. know it. And you guys don't? Oh, breaking. Don't, you don't fucking <laughs> the last, I, I believe it's the last Ronin. It's you don't know who the turtle is. You don't know if it's Michelangelo, Raphael. Donatello, Leonardo. There's only one left alive. Oh, okay. And okay, all it's right, right, you're yeah. no one. He has a black mask. He's got a sai, a bow, a katana, and a nunchuck. He's got all the weapons with him. Yeah. And like it, it was supposed to come out. I don't know if it came out yet. I was looking to see. I maybe I'm getting the name wrong. I thought it was called Last Ronin, but I saw that name when I was it doing is, the it research. Is Last Ronin. I'm on. I'm on so, CBR.com. Yeah, like so. doing some of the research. I It was supposed to come out this month, but I thought they pushed it back to September. But I was on eBay, and people were already selling copies of the first issue. It looks That's bad. It looks like. Holy shit. looks ass. sick, dude. Yeah, yeah that looks sick. It, it got to be like right. No, it has you to know, be I rap, think it's someone, because I've been watching. Oh, it might what be I Mikey. Thought. It because be taking the yeah. you know the happy go lucky guy and whatnot, and then making yeah. him dark and as putting shit. Him in a, yeah. So I was gonna say with the, the comic when they first started out, we know the Ninja Turtles as like four different colors, you know, during the cartoon, but yes. they started off all red, all red, um, mm -hmm. yeah. and mm -hmm. and they were serious too. They, it oh, was yeah. cussing in the oh, comic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they were serious. Like, it wasn't all fun and games. And I know we're going to talk about the cartoon later, but there is a end series for the 2003 series where they did a movie called Turtles Forever, and they meet all their incarnations. So it's the 2003 version, 
the 1987 version and they go to Turtle Prime, which is a black and white world where they meet the black what? and white turtles who are the original. I think I've seen I haven't yes. seen it. Randomly yeah, seen yeah. this. Yes. And they beat and the black and white turtles beat the <laughs> shit out of them turtles, dude. Like they cuz they're serious. They're like, "What's with all this Technicolor and they, the other thing really too the is, <laughs> Yeah, right, right. Cuz Shredder, cuz Shredder at that time, he was a low-level operative. Like he wasn't like as popular as he their main villain you know like he would come fight but i mean you know it was not like one of those big you're things. talking about in the original story like in the early yeah, comic type man let me let me give you that yeah because i thought in the original synopsis. story or the original like first couple issues i thought shredder well the foot clan but also the shredder was the main villain but then they branched off into uh other characters yeah like shredder shredder because he um, died like right away started yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they, they, so Shredder was ranked in ING's third, he was ranked 39th as the greatest comic book nice. villain of all time. So, that's that. In the original comic book, Mirage comic, Oroku Saki is the younger brother of Oroku Nagi, who had been killed by fellow ninja Hamato Yoshi, the owner of Splinter, the turtle's mentor, and a feud over a woman named Tang Shin, resulting in Yoshi fleeing with Shin to the it's United States. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Angry, angry at the death of his older brother, Saki joined the Foot Clan and trained to be a ninja. He quickly became one of their deadliest warriors and rose up in the ranks and was chosen to lead the Foot's American branch, operating in New York under the name The Shredder. Saki used the opportunity to avenge his brother's killing uh, by killing Yoshi and Shin. Under Saki's leadership, the Foot participated in variety of of criminal activities including drug smuggling arms running and assassination wow so this is a little more in depth mm -hmm. than um the cartoon it's, it's, 13, it turned into narcos yeah uh, yeah yeah 13 years later saki was challenged by the ninja turtles who were the the result of an accident exposing four ordinary turtles to radioactive waste they were trained by yoshi's pet rat splinter who also been mutated by the same substance to avenge his former master after a lengthy rooftop battle where Saki seemed to be winning, Leonardo managed to plunge his sword through Saki's torso. Defeated, he was offered the opportunity to commit seppuku, ritual suicide, but Shredder refused and detonated a thermite grenade in an attempt to take their lives as well. But at the last second, Donatello used his bow staff to knock Shredder off the building to his death. However... It was not yet the Wait, end of the, the ninja, the ninja turtles were like, "Yeah, you gotta perform seppuku. We're gonna allow you to kill yourself in order to." <laughs> no, Splinter. I think Splinter was the one who told him. That's like, still hey, you really can, fucked you up for a kids' this. comic book. <laughs> However, so here's what it said. However, it was not yet the end of the Shredder. He returned on Christmas Eve, seemingly resurrected by the army of foot ninjas, severely beating. Leonardo in burning down the apartment of the turtles yep. in the movie Damn, just in ally the April O'Neil <laughs> forcing them to go into hiding outside the city. A year later in the story Return to New York the turtles return to settle the score with the Shredder. Leonardo faces off against Oroku Saki alone during which Saki revealed he was brought back to life by a technique using worms feeding on his remains and recreating his cells to reform his body. In the battle, Leonardo decapitates the villain, finally killing him, and the four turtles burn his body at the Hudson. They made sure yeah. that motherfucker was <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. God. How do you get yeah. brought back by worms? That's but he had another... Okay, I don't want to keep going to this. He had another Oh, please do. So, it's all hilarious. right. So, that's, so, anyway, so Shredder... So, he wasn't a low-level operative. He just wasn't the main focus of the No, he rose series. up. Yes, yeah, so, because... You know, then you got the Utrams, you know, and then that's like yep. Crane's people. Well, Crane wasn't an Utram. The Utrams were something else. And then Crane was introduced in the... Crane was... Uh, there's yeah. different comics where Crane is yeah. a part of that group. And, like, that That was... It's yeah. not that important. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> no, but I got you, dude. All I got that. You. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure because there's so many yeah. versions that it's kind of hard to say what's true and what's not true i mean what's canon exactly. what's not canon so because the utrams were the ones who created mm -hmm. the ooze you know and they're so aliens that's what right was. they're alien they're an alien race and dude we haven't even hit the tip of the fucking iceberg you still got the triceratons yep. 
which were like a and warlike. that's where you lose me because I didn't yeah. know all, any of that stuff. Oh, uh, we do. There's the battle nexus where they go and battle different aliens throughout. It was like a a big battle thing, like. In the series 2003, Hamato Yoshi battled in the Battle Nexus. Like he was he was a international or universal champion and the turtles found that out later on cuz they consider him their grandfather, I guess, cuz Splinter would be their father. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's it's a whole lot with that, man. You know what the first comic I was that got into? What was that? The Mr. Jesus. T comic. It was the Mr. <laughs> T comic, dude. Because that's when wow. it was the Mr. T comic and the T-Force, I think. And in that Wait, one. And the T-Force? There was a Marvel. Yeah. Mr. T and that. the T-Force. Yeah. It was like his group of Well, like English breakfast, black, green. T-Force. Earl Grey. He's a demolition Yeah. Expert. So, so in that Mr. T comic. There was a spoof of the Fantastic Four, which had the family from Married with Children as the characters on there. And that's when I was getting, I was like, wow, man, you know, because Al Bundy was Mr. Fantastic. <laughs> Kelly was the thing. Oh, really? <laughs> and Bud was Yeah, Married with Children the had human their own torch. comic. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. So... I don't know who Peggy must have been the Invisible Woman. She had to have been. <laughs> I really liked that, and I was like, "Man, let me get into this." Mm-hmm. And then somebody gave me my uncle gave me an old EC comic. Now EC created like all the horror comics and stuff like that. So I started reading the EC comics, which was like Creep Show. Did they and uh, do the that. Tales from the Crypt comic? Who did that one? I think EC did Creep Show or Tales from the Crypt. Yeah, I remember reading because because the Creep Show is a its own movie like if you ever seen the creep show like that's those are so. movies yeah yeah so back in it so damn we keep going down these rabbit we should call yeah. this the rabbit hole we, that's all we do is just go down different rabbit holes so well, that's what the, EC, that's what's so good about a podcast man you just yeah, like, roll yeah, with it yeah. but i wanted to draw the, like when i saw batman the uh, tim yeah. burton movie and yes. turtles they were equally responsible for me getting into the comics and yes. buying yep. toys like oh, yeah. crazy i wanted as, to play with the guys, toys and as, draw them yeah as you guys saw in my collection like i play with those fucking things like when i have downtime i'm just like oh you yeah, don't just look at them you actually play hell no i do wow. i take them out the box <laughs> like you know i, I play with it like because uh, for me you know my partner in crime upstairs asked me like what do i want to do with them like after i've departed I'm, i was like donate them to a hospital you know let some kids have some fun with them. You John, know? you're like, funny. So instead of donating your organs, you're donating toys. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, my, that's my goal is... Well, since, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, yeah, I don't want to be... I, well, I don't want to be a Debbie Dab. First, we... Okay, so if we're going to go a little macabre. So we've talked about what would be what I wanted. So I was like, first thing, let's bury me in a crypt with my toys like an Egyptian. Oh, hell no. Nah. Like, nah. <laughs> she was like, no. Nah. I don't think your insurance will allow that. So then I was like, That's hilarious. so then I was like, well, just donate them, you know, when I'm gone or whatever. My organs, I am an organ donor, but my end wishes is to have my skeleton preserved and sent to a all girl college. Oh. So I can be like that skeleton hanging up in the corner. I was going to say, I so wanted to be stuck I'm like one of those winning, animals. <laughs> Yeah, I wanted to be stuffed yeah. like one of those animals and propped up. Yeah, be stuffed and mounted like a yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> Like when we when we were first together, when we were first together, I was like, so what if you die before me? Like, what's the game plan? She's like, don't worry, I've already have a stipulation. Oh, she in has place. arrangements. Did it? <laughs> yeah, and the arrangement is that when she dies, I'm to be buried with her. <laughs> Oh shit! Like you ever seen the Mr. Burns <laughs> when Smithers is like, I, "It'll be an honor to be your heir after you pass." And Burns is like, "Oh, Smithers, I have different plans for you." And it's like a coffin attachment with Mr. Burns. <laughs> <laughs> S- Smithers is down there. <laughs> yeah. Aaron, so, yeah. let me guess. You want to be freeze frame like fucking Han Solo? Uh, no, like, I'm just... gonna get. Well, I'm not gonna need my dick and balls anymore. I'm gonna get them uh, cut off, put them <laughs> into a says who? Put into a bowl, and then uh, put. Yeah. on my brother's table because he'll probably live longer than I am and it's going to be a little engraving saying suck my dick <laughs> and um, <laughs> probably oh I'm going to do a sky burial Ooh. 
Oh yeah, dude. In all seriousness, I want to be. Uh, I want my ashes infused with yeah. the tree, because they can do that. I would like to like be weed like weed or a real tree. Like a real tree. Uh, I, mean, I don't want to be smoked. Dude, I mean, you know, yeah, so damn, yeah. dog, good. <laughs> no, man. Like they have these forests where you can forest or whatever, where you can have your ashes or remains nutriently infused with a tree or something. And that's what I would like. Like I would like to be a tree dude. Like later on in life, I can just yeah, it's <laughs> still still serve. My a whole thing dude. is is just like it, well, the whole sky barrier. Everyone thinks that it's like getting thrown out of a plane. I no, was just I was not. imagining your yeah, I was thinking I was thinking <laughs> weekend at Bernie's. Like <laughs> when they said it, like throw your dead body out of the plane on a your family of four riding driving yeah. the plane. No, I it's um <laughs> basically what you do is you lay the person's body out on a hill and vultures pick it clean. <laughs> What? Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, yeah. oh, it's a, no. it's a Native American <laughs> way of uh, burial, I guess, but I'm not sure which tribe does it. But I was like, fuck it. Yo, Let's man. do that. And then birds could shit me out. That was a that was a Tales from a Crypt episode. Oh, really? No Sky burial? That, yeah, 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 yeah. The fucking this convict tries to escape this cop and the cop handcuffs himself to the convict but the convict kills him so he has to drag the cop's body Ooh. through the desert meanwhile he's being hunted by a hungry vulture and the Anyway, the vulture, the vulture is hunting this guy down. It's Kyle oh, McLaughlin. I think you know I have seen that, that episode. And he's like, and he's like, you're not gonna get me or whatever. So he's, be, the, you know, he's being drained by the desert, the sun and the heat. He finds a a can top and a stick, and he's trying to use it as a hatchet to cut off the cop's wrist so he can make it to Mexico. Long story short, he cuts off his own wrist. He falls, breaks his neck, but yep, he's still I have alive. Seen this. And the vulture, that the, the me vulture, of saw. <laughs> the movie yeah, the vulture just swoops in and starts picking at him. Damn, and he dies like that. It's it's such a crazy. Have uh, you guys seen True Detective? Carry on death. That's the oh. name of it, or something. Have you guys seen True Detective season two? There season two, happen. I well, I have. Season two was fucking terrible. I guess but, to touch more yeah. on the the comics and everything, the different. Comic. I was gonna say the different versions of. So so Get the it way. The you're not getting the water. way that you kind of exp like we were saying they all had red the only way that you could tell them apart was through their weapons and so yeah. michelangelo having the nunchucks Raphael having the size leonardo yeah. having the katanas the yep, twin katanas. and donatello yeah. having the bow that's it for anyone that doesn't really yeah. know ninja turtles it's you know if you don't know yeah. Ninja Turtles, well, actually, probably the younger people wouldn't because all the shit that they put out now is just kind of terrible. I know, man. It's kind of like, and I mentioned it in our text, like Transformers. Like, there's so many, epi there's so many different versions that the actual version is what you should yeah. go with because you you know everybody has a different interpretation like bumblebee doesn't talk in this one or bumblebee's supposed to talk oh he uses the radio to talk this time like come on man like make up your freaking mind you know is 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 megatron a gun or is he gonna be a tank or they yeah. don't know what the fuck and that's all so, michael bay just, and we'll probably i know you didn't really want to talk about it with his yeah. fucking version yeah. His vile sin. Oh, the best version? Oh, no, that was huh? the, yeah, yeah, the best. Oh, the, the best, best version? Of the, 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 did you see those turtles, dude? Speaking like, of macabre. How did, how did they almost have noses? That's beyond there was me. so man. many fucking and problems with that movie, too. You could talk to the, yo, the fucking crew. The cast said how terrible it was. Anyways, yeah. you might as... Shredder I didn't was even gonna see be a white. Shredder one. was gonna be the Shredder was gonna yeah. originally be a white dude. It, it, that guy from Drive Angry, what, Nicholas Cage. The, the, or was that the, Nicholas Cage? <laughs> no, not Nicholas okay, Cage. I but the, kind of but like the guy that. who was chasing Nicholas Cage. Oh, he was gonna be yes, the Shredder. Yes, yes, yes. William something. I forget his name, but yeah. we could Boy. probably jump yeah. into <laughs> the the cartoon a little bit because that it basically explains the the comic and the fact that it's still going on yeah. today and the hype that the last ronin is getting right now because the other thing too yeah. is is that they're hinting towards the fact that shredder has returned yes so in the cartoon there's a couple variations so first variation is the multicolored mm -hmm. bandanas you know blue for leonardo red for raf orange for michelangelo and purple for donatello the other thing too is they combine two characters splinter and hamato yoshi so what they had it was as 
they were both training for the Foot Clan, and what ends up happening is Amato Yoshi commits a great dishonor. He ends up going to America with no money. He's living in the sewer where he finds four pet turtles, and he's feeding the turtles and the rats in the sewer. So as the turtles got his DNA, they evolved into humanoid turtles, whereas he was feeding the rats, so he evolved, devolved, or changed into a rat. And Splinter, he changed his name to Splinter because, you know, he used to bite wood, like in his kung fu moves, he could bite through wood and shit like that, so. And he said he named the turtles after the four Renaissance artists, which, come on, guys, if you don't know who the Renaissance artists are now, we're not going yeah. to <laughs> So that's what ended up. Well, to also that. touch so, on that, four yeah. humors is brought up a lot too with uh, groups yeah. of four. Even you brought up Fantastic Four; it's the yeah. same thing. And yeah. I'll just say them real quick, and you know, maybe I could touch on them yeah. a little bit later. But you have the four humors, which are like Leo is phlegmatic, uh, which is more. Yeah. What does that mean, huh? though? Yeah. Oh, what uh, does that the, mean? Though? Yeah, Aaron, we don't know. Yeah, what you're yeah, 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 about. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on. I'm getting it. I'm getting it because I wrote it down and didn't put the explanation on there. Phlegmatic Ford fundamental. The lead turtle Leonardo has a personality based around the phlegmatic humor, represented by f- phlegm or the element of water. Phlegmatic personality tends to be steadfast, huh. honor bound, while calm and introverted. The yes. wacky okay. Michelangelo yeah. is more of a sanguine personality, being the one of the four turtles to constantly crack jokes. Sanguine is a temperament associated mm-hmm. with blood and the element of air. The temperament is commonly mm-hmm. the most childlike and carefree. Um, so, like mm-hmm. Michelangelo, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Human Torch. Like it just. Yeah, they're the they're the comedy. They're like the the one that yep. breaks the tension. So, which is you know, I I know I let mm-hmm. you get back to that, but Rob Paulson is the voice actor for Raph on the animated series yeah. in 87. He came back and voiced Donatello on the yep. 2012 series. So that's the same voice. And if you don't know who Rob Polson is, he also was the voice of Pinky in Pinky in the Brain. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Him Love and... Uh, I, yeah, yeah. Pinky well, another yeah, uh, little yeah. quiz thing, the guy that voiced Leo in the 87 version also voiced the uh uh what's his name ah crap but he's he's the lead voice uh, the lead character in akira the dub version yeah yeah uh, whoa yeah okay the All dub right. version but that doesn't matter right. so much the dub, um the so yeah. the hot-headed raphael falls under the choleric temperament presented by yellow bile yeah. in the element of fire uh choleric pr- personalities mm-hmm. are the more am- ambitious and leader-like but easily angered you know, like colicky yeah. baby, or you know, like something like colic. But he was more. But would you say in the '87 version, he wasn't as angry as no. later on? He was more, um, just a jackass. Like he was kind smart of. He his know, humor like, was more. Um, uh, what's the word? Deadpan. Which is kind yeah, of yeah, like yeah. a choleric, yeah. you know, like temperament yeah. too. And then the quiet Donatello represents the melancholic temperament associated with black black bile yeah. and the element of earth. Melancholic personalities are often more oh. introverted and brooding, uh, being extremely pragmatic and susceptible to depression. Okay, well, the, with yeah. that being is like uh, the genius that follows with the depression, like myself, yeah. you know, the genius yeah. that I am. Um, and you know, yeah, with the depression, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe yeah, yeah. it's undepressed because of how stupid I am. I don't know. Um, yeah. no. But it's it's the he's the lonely genius because everybody in there had some sort of mm-hmm. love connection, with the exception of Donnie, the only one who had. Because if you look at the '87 series, since we're talking about it, the neutrinos were those alien teenagers that came. Mikey fell in love with the female on there. Then there was Mona Lisa who was like this reptile girl that Raph fell in love with. And then there was Lotus, who was the female ninja that was training under Shredder. Leo fell in love with her. I don't remember hearing or thinking or seeing Donnie fall in love with any character on there until 2012 when he was somewhat smitten with I want to know so. something. Can the turtles have kids? You mean do the turtles have uh, dicks? 
Yeah, do they even? Uh, <laughs> they t- they that's what I was that getting to, Aaron. Bay's I movie. try to keep they it touch on they, they touch on that in Michael Bay's movie because Mikey has a crush on April. And they talk about how turtles can do it. Like he's like, "Oh, I feel my, I feel my oh, shell." Jesus tightening. Christ! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. So, I, I would think. I don't yeah. know, man. The turtles were farting in that movie too. I was just like, "Fuck, Michael Bay, dude!" Like he created a movie. He well, yeah, but he created a movie for thirteen-year-old boys, and he's gone on record saying that. Like my movies are full of girls and explosions it's movies that you want to you know like it. go wow explosion and then ooh, i'm gonna jerk off later it's yeah <laughs> yeah 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 because oh, megan fox <laughs> yeah because megan fox was in uh transformers the first one that came out that bay did and he should have left it at that but now he had to go ahead and uh bring her back for the second one only to not bring her for the third one and then he brings her up they have a falling out and then he's like well I need you for Ninja Turtles because we gotta get these little boys hard let's get these again. peepees so hard just like what the <laughs> fuck dude? yep god damn so it's just crazy to me man like I really hated that movie and the original concept that they were gonna do for the turtle movie with Michael Bay was they came from a turtle planet that was going to be the original yes. concept and I remember everybody yeah. was up in arms like the turtles were to come from a turtle planet there was turtle girls yeah and they all were aliens shit, which so. we will touch on too because uh, they decided to add a girl into a live action series which only lasted only yes, lasted one yes. season back to the sewer <laughs> yeah uh Wait, Venus oh I think we're actually <laughs> thinking because there was a live action version by Saban are we thinking the same thing yes that's the same one because those turtles back to the sewer were they also did a crossover episode with the yes. Power Rangers. Oh my God! I remember that. But it's—I yep. guess the uh, what is it? Saban was just like, "Let's yeah. make this money!" <laughs> Hell yeah! Um, yeah. <laughs> I remember that. They used to come on Fridays. I, I never watched yeah. that fucking thing. I saw one time that—that that was the age range where I was starting to just edge out and just look at women and. Yeah, Saban. Never look Saban. Back. Saban was creating all the Power Ranger knockoffs. So they had mm-hmm. Power Rangers, Big Bad Beetleboards, Beetleboard, VR like Troopers, the Max Rider, which was Common Rider, <laughs> the Common Rider, and then um VR Troopers. Yeah, and Power Rangers is still yeah. going the fuck on. Yep. It's still going on. Like what is it? Power Rangers Super Ninja <laughs> Karate Four. It's so it's been going on so long that they've looped back around. Power Iron Rangers. Sword. That's how long it's thirty one flavors. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And um, that shit, man. I still love that Same. show, by the way. <laughs> yeah, love. I remember Power the movie. Yeah. Well, then the, the fuck. That's the whole yeah. episode. Well, I was gonna say itself, technically, <laughs> if you look at it, the timeline in the nineties and everything after. The, and we'll touch more on the movies next episode, but after the second movie, yeah. Power Rangers were the new thing. Yeah, man. Like, Shit. Power Rangers came out, and I remember pe- parents were protesting because my kid is doing karate at home, and he's yeah. damaging <laughs> shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, that used Dude, to be, I I used those, to be that but kid. I'm not going to lie, and I'm surprised I haven't bought them yet. The Zords. Fuck, I wanted yes, the Zords dude. so I got my bad, shit dude. stolen. I'll never forget it. After <laughs> I graduated fifth grade, when you got to clear yeah. out your locker, yeah, someone cleared me out and took all, dude, I the was fuck so out, mad. Fuck. I remember the, my favorite fucking Power Ranger moment is when the Green Ranger got introduced. And he had yeah, that, that dumbass flute. Flute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that dumbass fucking flute. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much got I was them. always was. a Red Ranger Jason man. So when that yeah, guy, yeah, Green yeah. Ranger Tommy, came, I was jealous. I was like, man, fuck yeah. you. Jason is yeah, the leader, dude. bastards. I'm trying to say <laughs> <make laughs> <him laughs> <him laughs> Like, right. just go. <laughs> but of course, I was always that too. Tyrannosaurus Rex, Pterodactyl, <laughs> Triceratops. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? Power Rangers <laughs> along with uh, Jurassic Park. That's how I kind of got into uh, dinosaurs, too. Yeah. So. yeah, 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 yeah. No, I was always a, well, so with Ninja Turtles, you think pizza would be as yeah. big as it is right now? Oh, dude. What was the official pizza, pizza of Hut. the Turtles? Do you guys know? 
Yeah. yeah, Pizza Hut was the official one in after the movies, but Domino's. At Noel in the original movies, but do you know what pizza they ate in the first movie? Oh wait, it. Well, it was in New York. They had all types of pizza and Domino's. It was Domino's. Okay. It was Domino's because the pizza guy had on a blue and red jacket and that was the guy who actually played michelangelo too yeah 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 he's like come on man he was like i couldn't find a place he said wise man once said that what the fuck did he say wise man once said, never pay full price for for late pizza (laughs) or some shit that movie you know what dude like that movie was very emotional Mm -hmm. like it wasn't just a traditional action movie like it was emotional. Like I do when they kidnapped Splinter, I was crying. Aww. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> dude, that Splinter, the whoever played that Splinter. There's only two Splinters that I like: the Splinter in the first movie, and the Splinter in TMNT, which was the CGI fourth movie that came out. That one was done by Mako. Mako was the voice of Splinter in that movie. And if you don't know who Mako is, Mako was a phenomenal actor. Mm-hmm. He played the wizard in Conan, and he also was Samurai Aku. Jack. Samurai Jack, yep. Aku. Yep. Ah, Samurai! <laughs> I had a question, though. <laughs> I don't remember this, but who's the oldest? Like, are they, are the turtles twins, or... All right, so, technically, they're not really brothers. They're all different types of turtles. Of turtles. Okay. But the oldest would be Raph. But Leo would be the leader. Raph would be the leader, but he doesn't know how to control his anger. I have tried to channel your anger, Raphael. But more remains. Anger clouds the mind. Turned inward, it is an unconquerable enemy. If he could just keep his anger in check, he would be a phenomenal He's like the Wolverine of that. Yeah, yeah, that's what he is. He's pretty much the Wolverine of the group. And Mikey's the youngest, which would make Donnie the third oldest. Or, yeah, the third. Just to touch on this real but, quick, you know the actor Sam Rockwell? He's in yeah. the movie. Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Is I, I just remembered he's the gang member that introduces Danny to everyone. Oh, yeah, he's yeah, the one smoking the cigarettes down you near the arcade. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Support yeah. old mags, even though there's, you know, women yeah, around yeah. here. You could, you could have it. I like that. You know what, dude? I like Please that car. Please do the I rest like... of this episode. Oh, just like this, I can do that. I yeah. can do this. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. my uh, I... Robert De Niro and the Irishman. Yes, yes, I can do that for you. I li- Elias Cotes, I think, or Coteus, who played Casey Jones. I liked him in that movie. Dude. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, I man. really liked that Casey Jones. I liked when him and Raph were going at it, and he hit Raph with that cricket yeah. bat. <laughs> <laughs> and Raph is running around New York in the trench coat. Like, yeah, that's that's that dude, Loki. That's the action figure I want. I want that one so fucking bad, dude. It's hard to find it, but I'm gonna get every it. Every episode, get John it. has to yeah. secretly talk about yeah, the toys he's gonna acquire. Well, I downloaded this. I I downloaded this app. I sent you guys a link. It's a uh, shout out to Mega Megalopolis Toys. Oh my. god god they have every toy you could think of gi joe's fucking thundercats and they're not expensive they're pre-orders but they're not expensive i'm looking forward to spending a lot of money on these next month i'm telling them no i'm kidding yeah, yeah that's all right <laughs> it, it is what it is they're the guys they're, this is the company that's going to make the barnyard oh, no shit yeah because yeah, I, yeah, I was yeah. going to actually the thing that i'm trying to save up for right now is the x-men sentinel it's like 300 bucks 18 inch yeah. X-Men Sentinel. Yeah. Whoa. I'm trying to show you guys at least some of the articulation. And all the I listeners, I have to say so. this every episode, but don't worry, we fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, so well, they got uh, Mad Balls, Barnyard Commandos. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I was saying, man. Like, I had a quick uh, question about yes. the turtles. Did you guys? You're Shredder, dude. Shredder, Holy Shredder, shit. Shredder is Shredder. Shit. Dude, that's only forty-five what? bucks. Well, I'm spe- yeah. We're all speechless. No, I was just like, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. You guys mentioned it earlier, but you said like once the turtles kind of took off with the comics and the movies, the, the creators kind of handed it off to yeah, other so creators. It became so overwhelming that, as I read earlier. You know, Eastman, who was it? Laird was like, hey, I'm out, dude. Or Eastman was like, yo, I'm out. And Laird is pretty much still drawing the comics on his own time. 
So they turned it over to Nickelodeon, which Nickelodeon. Okay, so my thoughts on Nickelodeon, like I don't like Nickelodeon now, but I like Nickelodeon yeah. when we were young. And right now, they've just fucking... Oh, my God. Are we just getting too old to appreciate this? Well, Don't you think kids 20 years from now are going to say the same? We're right. They're wrong. Yeah, no, we're the ones that are right. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I mean, I guess each interpretation. I was just going to say, like, Nickelodeon, back when we were younger, dude, had, like, substance. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you had, like... Snick, Legend of the Hidden Temple. You had uh, Hey Dude, fucking Rugrats. Pete and Pete, yeah. part of that? Pete, and Pete was a part of Love that time. Pete. Yeah, Are You Afraid of the Dark, which was on Snick. And fucking Double Dare. Clarissa there. knows Clarissa that. explains it oh, all. Explains it all. Yeah, okay. man, they had some good stuff. And now they have like fucked up shit like the <clears throat> the Bravermans and the, the, the Thundermans and the fucking no, which is the Waverly Place in Disney, but that's my Well, if you look at it. Else. Well, the real question I had. Oh, no, I was going to say Go it's ahead. a generational thing. Uh, probably the generation before us was yeah. kind of the same with what they saw and everything. But I think it is yeah. developing into something completely different when it comes to entertainment for kids. You're looking at platforms that are, you know, we're, my issue is, is that the imagination of kids today is shortened a lot by TikToks, by YouTubes and whatnot. Imagination in general, I think is kind of getting just drowned out in a sense where 20 years from now, no one other than it's going to be the three of us in or on, on a uh, porch, just yelling at people is basically what it's going to be because I don't think you're going to have, yeah. once our generation is gone, you won't have things like Ninja Turtles. You won't have things like Transformers. No. You know, unless some of the earlier, like the, the what is it, the Generation Z keeps up with that stuff. Yeah. I don't see it happening because the. It's going to turn into, and it's a movie reference that the same generation we're talking about is not going to get. It's going to turn into that utopia, like on fucking Demolition Man, where they don't have sex anymore. They fucking put their hands together well. and they fucking <laughs> yeah, be well. That shit, like they listen to retro commercials yeah. on the radio as top five music and shit. Like that's what's gonna end up happening. And our generation is gonna be the sewer people downstairs, fucking smoking rats cigars and, like, and everything, you know, drinking beer. Yeah, yeah. The the oh Dennis. Oh god, I Leary. hope I don't end up like Dennis Leary. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, like the Dennis Leary group. Cause my thing is, is like it's really this i it's i don't want to be a downer dude but it's really disheartening because some shit that you should be able to get you're yeah. not getting anymore you know what i'm saying like we've had this conversation off mic like being able to talk about some shit and like okay turtles for instance will probably get to the point where it's like yo man this is irrelevant there's no there's no girls on there that are doing anything of you know and i'm not saying that there's anything wrong with having representation but there is going to come a time when things like that are going to have to represent what the world we live in yeah is like my my question is do you go back and change all of it for for something like that i'm not saying that you shouldn't but you know if the option is there do you change it like do the turtles i don't know man it's just i don't know i i've i've it's kind of hard, man. You know, like uh, all we can do is pass off this I, information to our our kids. It'd be like because yeah. I don't think enough of our generation cares about this stuff anymore, except for a few nostalgia nerds no. like you know us that are obsessed with yeah. this type of stuff. Yeah. And it, it, you know, and we'll touch more like next week when we're talking about the movies because I think for me the movies were the the pinnacle. Well, at least the first three. Yes. And then first, the, even though the third one was a shit show, but like my whole thing is, is finding those moments. Like I, I'm this weekend, I am going to in between watching Steven Seagal movies and eating lots of pizza. Um, <laughs> I am going to uh, watch Jesus. the three tournament. Glimmer Dude, man. He, no, I'm, I'm talking about the new Steven Seagal movies. Those are fucking stupid. Uh, and I'm going to enjoy the shit out uh, of them. Steven Seagal is oh, such yeah. a fucking moron. It's so, but you know what? I'm going to say this as soon as they started coming with the assault charges and everything like that he hightailed it right to russia and changed his fucking citizenship yep. like yeah. that like he's yep. a russian yeah. citizen now suppose that yeah 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 because what happened was what happened with seagal and i could be wrong you know if anybody's listening and knows the right stuff you can email us but what i believed happened was he got brought up on 
first off, he used to beat up stunts, stuntmen. Like, stuntmen, they're there for stunts. They're not there to actually get their ass beat. Seagal was beating the shit out of stuntmen, and then I think he assaulted a woman, yeah. too. Is like. this allegedly? Well, Should this we is allegedly. allegedly. Yeah, we'll say allegedly. Allegedly. Oh, okay. Let's, yeah, See. allegedly. Allegedly, this had happened. That's what I'm not trying to get sued I'm broke. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. No. It's uh, yeah, so, well. You know. Seagal is the closest thing to a Ninja Turtle. He's got the body of you know a turtle, and he knows what yeah. fake karate or something. I'm sure if I said that, he's gonna yeah, find yeah, me yeah. and fucking break my wrist. <laughs> Who beat his ass in real life? Didn't Chuck Norris kick he, his ass for real? Somebody well, come on now. It's Chuck Norris. Yeah. There's an That's interview, like the one interview yeah. that he did. He's like being asked, like oh, Michael, Michael J. Yeah, they Michael asked Jai him, like, White. Do, do you think you could, you know, do you think Michael Jaleel White, uh, Jaleel White? Jai, he's Jai Urkel. White. He Jai, Jai, Urkel um, yeah. Do you think you could beat him? And he's just like scoffs at her. He's like, huh, what, what are you talking about? What are you, what are you trying to? That's my Steven Seagal. <laughs> Uh, what are you talking about? That's pretty good. And yeah. it's like, no, yeah, he could he could beat the shit out of you, Steven. Like, most people could. Most people yeah. could. I could beat him in a foot race going, like, 20 feet. My, <laughs> oh, my God. Have you seen him talking run? about his malaria? <laughs> oh, yeah. He's just Dude. got his hands. He doesn't move his arms. He, wasn't he in a movie with a Wayne's? Like, didn't yeah, he do Glimmer a movie Man. with a Wayne? Yes. Like, yeah. Glimmer Man. Yeah, like. The Waynes were in everything back then. Like, everything. Yeah, man. <laughs> like, but real quick, Michael J. J. White played, like you said, Spawn. Dude, he's an oh, unsung man. hero Mortal of, Kombat. Uh, of action. Dude, he's movies. the reason why yeah, Mortal like, Kombat came back. One of the reasons. Yeah he, yeah, he played Jax, right? He was in Dark yeah. Knight, too. Dude, he was a fucking talent. Yeah, yeah, he played Gamble in Dark Knight. You know, like, he, he needs a Marvel character like he needs a marvel character he could have been blade i give him blade yo man he could have been blade and what the fuck did they do with blade they threw blade no blade's coming back a comet well i'm just saying that when this marvel Marvel cinematic when this marvel cinematic universe took place i'm just saying this i got two things to say one thing's a little (laughs) bit dark and the other thing is kind of funny so the first thing i'm gonna say baby is (laughs) <laughs> the first thing is um blade 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 needs to get a lot more credit than because it wasn't fucking iron man that started no the not Marvel at all cinematic universe it should have been blade wesley snipes as blade was probably one of the best movies that oh ever, yeah the first one I like that one. Well, like was that Punisher should, the first rated R comic book movie, or was it? Blade? Oh, with uh, with Dolph Lundgren. Yeah, Dolph Lundgren. Yeah, well, that was rated R, right? Because I was gonna was say PG-13. Blade was the first like legitimate one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It Blade, was. Oh, well, then Blade. Blade. Blade should have got a lot more credit than it did, and then they kind of just swept it under the rug, you know, after Blade Trinity. And then, and then, you know, let's talk about fucking Ryan Reynolds. That motherfucker just had three goddamn tries at being a superhero. He was in Blade Trinity. Then he Green did Lantern. Wolverine fucking Origins. Oh. Wolverine Origins. And War Origins. Then Green Lantern. And, and Deadpool. And I'm just like, yo, man, like, that motherfucker got three tries. So there should be other people getting more chances, too. You know what I'm saying? Not And I and Deadpool is a good match. Like, I think Deadpool is a good match. There's a there's the Marvel Universe is so vast that there's a character. Well, I was going to say, technically, play. the first uh, Marvel movie. Well, I don't know if it was the first. Howard, Howard the, the Duck. Duck. No, uh, Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I oh, it, was the, it was terrible. Don't. <laughs> yeah, it was horrible. Wasn't he wearing he was a helmet? Actually, like, not his oh, traditional helmet? Oh, no, you're helmet. talking the TV show. The movie, he was wearing, oh, like, yeah. the original, like, with the scales and everything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in yeah, the, yeah. the TV show, yeah, yeah, it was a bike helmet. <laughs> a bike helmet. Um, the what new the Blade fuck? is going to be, I can't say his name right or do it justice, Mar- Marshala Ali. Oh, you're talking about Mar- Marshall? Yeah, Mar- Marshala yeah. Ali. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think dude. that's good. Like, if, for people who don't know, he was in True Detective. Season 3. Homeland. No, not Homeland. Homeland. Not Homeland. Uh, Kevin Spacey He one. was in... Moonlight. Uh, yep. What was it? Moonlight? Moonlight. He's a great actor. House yep. of Cards. Work. That's what I was thinking. House of Cards. I liked him in House of Cards. That was a great show. It until was Spacey. until somebody <laughs> ruined it. Oh. Like, that, that, let's talk about that later. But, I mean, fuck, man. Like, I just... And the thing and the thing is is Allegedly. I like okay. and I, I, and I, say, and I still watch the episode. usual suspects. <laughs> Fuck Kevin Spacey yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Aaron. 
think you could do me a big fave? Wherever you're listening to this right now, rate and subscribe. Find new episodes where you listen to podcasts and look for us on all the social media sites and Gmail at After School Special Podcasts at Gmail, After School Special Podcasts at Instagram and Facebook, and After School SPE3 on Twitter. The fact that it's still going on yeah. today and the fact that it's still going on yeah. today and the fact that it's still going on yeah. today and.